أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله لقد جاءت رسول ربنا بالحق الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء المرسلين خاتم النبيين سيدنا والنبينا ومولانا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وبيالي الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي عمري وهل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتاب الكريم ومحكم كتاب المجيد وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذ تأذن ربكم لئن شكرتم لأزيدنكم ولئن كفرتم إن عذابي لشديد آمنا بالله وصدق الله العلي العظيم The law of attraction is a theory that states that whatever it is that you are focusing on, whatever it is that you focus your mind into, whatever it is that you focus your energy into, you happen to attract it in your lives. This theory states that your mind is like a magnet. Whatever comes into your mind and stays there, you happen to attract it in your life. Now this works positively and it works negatively. For example, on the negative side, if we are always thinking that I never have enough, I always have less, I never have enough finances, then this theory states that you will attract less. If you're always thinking that I am unhealthy, that I am unfit, then you will always attract poor health. And if you're always thinking that I am a worthless individual, then this theory states that if you think you are a worthless individual, that you also will attract other people that think you are a worthless individual. This works opposite with the positive side. For example, if you're always thinking of abundance, then you will attract wealth opportunities. If you're always thinking of good health, of how fit you are, then you will always attract good health and good well-being. And if you're always thinking of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you in this life, then you will attract more things in this life where you feel where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is opening doors for you and opportunities for you. Now, a question arises. How does this theory relate within the realms of Islam. If we want to understand this theory within the realms of Islam, how do we do that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through his beloved messenger, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, in Hadith al-Qudsi states, I am to my servants as they expect me to be. Such a profound statement. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I am to you as you expect me to be. What does this mean? For example, if we take Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a Lord that is merciful, as a Lord that is compassionate, as a Lord that is beneficent, a Lord that loves us 70 times more than our own mothers, then we will be able to get to maintain that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which a true manifestation of worship can be attained. However, if we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a God of destruction, as a God that causes war, as a God of wrath, then it is very highly unlikely that we are able to maintain a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where we can truly manifest the meaning of worship. And therefore, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, I am to my servants, as they expect me to be, if we think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, his beneficence is only limited 
then it is limited mercy and beneficence from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will perceive. However, if we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy limitless, uncountable, then unlimited mercy is what we will perceive and unlimited mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what we will see. Similarly, discussing the theory of the law of attraction, Imam Ali alayhi salam has a very beautiful statement which has been associated to him. In that hadith, Imam Ali alayhi salam states, Watch your thoughts, for they become words. Watch your words, for they become actions. Watch your actions, for they become your habit. Watch your habit, for that becomes your character. And watch your character, for that becomes your destiny. Subhanallah, Imam Ali alayhi salam is linking what comes into your mind. He is linking your thoughts to what ends up becoming your destiny. From what we enter in our minds, what we attract in our minds, this is what becomes our destiny. So this theory of the law of attraction states that whatever it is that you put into your mind, whatever it is that you focus your energy and your mind into, you shall attract it in your lives. This works when it comes to complaining and it, com and it works when it comes to being grateful. Complaining is the opposite of being grateful. For example, if an individual is always complaining, complaining about his life, complaining about his studies, complaining about the relationship that he has with different people, complaining about his family, his work, his community, then he will always find more and more things to complain about. However, if an individual was to flip this around and if he's always thinking of being grateful, being grateful for the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day in, day out, then he will happen to see more and more things to be grateful for. Therefore, the topic of tonight's discussion, tomorrow's night's discussion, and the following day's discussion is titled Attracting Gratitude in Our Life. Gratitude in this Gratitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and gratitude towards his creation, the people. Now, sometimes it may happen that an individual may go about a whole day without thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It may so happen that an individual may go a whole week without saying shukran lillah. It may so happen that we may go a whole month without Acknowledging the blessings that we receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the 14th chapter of the Holy Quran, Surah Ibrahim, verse number 7 states, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَا رَبُّكُمْ And remember that your Lord has proclaimed, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you are grateful to me, I shall increase you in your favors. وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ However, if you deny me, here, ungratefulness has been compared to kufr. Allah says, La in kafr, If you deny me, inna azabi la shadeed. Surely your punishment is severe. Surely your chastisement is severe. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here, Remember and always be thankful to me. Always have gratitude around you in your life. Because if you are grateful to me, I will give you more things to be grateful for. Now this very beautiful ayat was revealed in the context of the Bani Israel, the people of Prophet Musa alayhi salam. Now we all know, we are all aware of the calamities that befell on the children of Israel. For example, as soon as the Pharaoh found out that there is going to be a male child from the children of Israel that is going to overthrow his kingdom, their own started killing every single male born every other year. And in doing so, hundreds and thousands of newly born children were slaughtered by the army of Pharaoh. And were it not for Asiya, the wife of Pharaoh, Prophet Musa would not have been raised in the palace of Pharaoh himself. Eventually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was able to grant the children of Israel with victory and was able to make them cross the Red Sea without any issues and thereby Pharaoh drowned in the Red Sea.
Now what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in this particular verse is He is saying, remember, remember that time. In the preceding verse, verse number 6, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And recall, O children of Israel, remember when Prophet Musa alayhi salam said to his people, remember that time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved you from the army of Pharaoh. Remember that time where, you, where the male born were being killed and he was keeping the females alive. Surely that was a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In these two verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is repeating himself. He is saying, remember that time when you are inflicted with a great disaster, with a great trial, and remember that time where I saved you from the people of Pharaoh. And he is asking, therefore, be grateful so that I increase in your favors. But the question that arises here is why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us to be grateful? Why is he reminding us of our past and he is ordering us to be grateful? Is he in need of our shukr? Is he in need of our, our hamd? If I was to, for example, tomorrow recite a hundred times shukran lillah, will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's lordship, his rububiyyat increase? Or if I was to not pay him any gratitude. Does his lordship decrease? No. On the contrary, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us for our past and to reminding us to do shukr because of us so that we, we don't become complacent. You see, many a times it happens that we lead very successful lives, alhamdulillah. But when it so happens that we, have, we face one difficulty, we start complaining, we'll complain about our studies, we'll complain about our work, we'll complain about our universities and colleges and school and about the people around us. Every small thing that comes to us, we start complaining. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to remember, myself included, is asking us to remember that time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had indeed blessed us with favors. Because if a person starts thinking of the things that he has to complain about, puts it on one side, and if he starts thinking about the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the other side, he will soon realize that those things that he has to be grateful for far outweigh those things that he has to complain about. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me and you the ability of sight, the ability of speech, the ability of smell. He has blessed us with such a wonderful family, such beautiful community. He has blessed us with so many things to be grateful for. And as soon as a person shifts his mindset from the mindset of complaining and shifts it to the mindset of gratitude, he will see himself more and more reasons to be grateful for. Our 10th holy Imam had a companion by the name of Abu Hashim al-Ja'fari. Abu Hashim al-Ja'fari was one of the most prominent companions of our 12th holy Imam. One day it so happened that Imam Ali al-Naqi al-Hadi sees Abu Hashim al-Ja'fari entering the room and he is trying to come into his presence. As soon as the Imam notices Abu Hashim's face, he realizes, you know what? Today, Abu Hashim is not in a good mood. He seems to be in a very bad mood and he, is he has come here to complain. So as soon as Abu Hashim enters the room, they greet each other, they exchange salams before Abu Hashim is able to say anything, before Abu Hashim is able to complain about the difficulties that he is currently experiencing in life, the Imam Hadi, Imam Hadi asks him a question. Oh Abu Hashim, which of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings have you come to thank for today? Abu Hashim is stunned, he is amazed. Imam asks him, Oh Abu Hashim, which of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings have you come to thank for today? Have you come to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have granted you with iman, with faith, so that your body never touches the fire of hell? Or have you come to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have granted you with health so that you are able to obey him? Or have you come to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have granted you with the level of qanaat, with the level of contentment and satisfaction that you are never able to find yourself in a lowly position. Oh Abu Hashim, which of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings 
have you come to thank for today? Abu Hashim hadn't come to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for anything. Rather, he had come to complain. However, look at Imam. Look at how Imam is trying to tell us whenever we feel in a state of complaining. Look at how Imam is trying to flip this completely around. Instead, Imam is uh, look, asking. Imam is making Abu Hashim to look at the glass of water in this world. Not as half empty, but always as half full. And in by doing so, if you realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in fact given me so much more things to be grateful for, and it deviates our mind, it takes our mind away from those things that we may have to complain about. But let us go in this, into this hadith a little bit deeper. Let us look at those three things that the Imam, Imam al-Hadi has reminded Abu Hashim to be grateful for. And let us see why those three things were important. Imam asks him, Oh Abu Hashim, have you come to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have granted you with Iman so that your body never touches the fire of hell? Is this reason not enough for us to fall into prostration, to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have guided us either through raising us in a family that believes in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to have guided us later in life in the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is this reason not Enough for us to prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala That he has made us believe in his oneness He has made us believe in his messenger In his prophet He has made us believe in the wilayat of Imam Ali alayhi salam And also on the ghaybat of Imam al-Hujjah Jalallahu ta'ala farajahu sharif That was on the first level On the second level Imam is asking Abu Hashim Oh Abu Hashim have you come to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have provided you with health so that you are able to obey him? Alhamdulillah, I am able to stand tall in my prayers. I am able to do these lengthy fasts during Mahi Ramadan. I am able to walk the long distances when it comes to Hajj. I am able to interact with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a beautiful manner. Is this reason not enough so that we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And on the final level, on the third level, Imam is asking Abu Hashim, O oh Abu Hashim, have you come to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that with the, for, the, for giving you the level of contentment so that you are never able to find yourself in a lowly position? How many of us, how many of us are able to say, Alhamdulillah, we, are, we have that level of qana'at, we have the level of contentment so that we are never able to Beg in the streets. Alhamdulillah, subhanahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us with that level of satisfaction so that we are never in a lowly position in front of the people. These were the three things that Imam Hadi flips completely around trying to change the mindset of Abu Hashim and by doing so trying to change our own mindset. Now it is the generosity of the Imam of the Ahlul Bayt that not only did he state this hadith, but he also gifted Abu Hashim with a gold, with a hundred dinars in a bag. Now, this flipping the mindset around forces us to think that surely we need to try and attract positive thoughts and energies into our lives and transform any complaints that we have into gratitude. Which is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you are grateful to me, I will increase you in your favors. For the more reasons we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, the more reasons we will find in this world to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. Inshallah, this topic will be continued tomorrow in thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thereafter thanking His creation, His people. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the opportunity to thank him in the way that he needs to be thanked and to grant us the blessing of Mahi Ramadan in that we are able to appreciate ourselves, alleviate ourselves in spirituality.